to me? Yes. Okay, good evening class. Today we're going to uh, cover for our teach back a lot of chapters. Let's begin with the chapter that is 15, which deals with what? Blood flow, right? When you're dealing with blood flow, you have to review the blood vessels, of course. We know the blood vessels. What are the three layers of a blood vessel wall? Tunica what? Intima, right? And what's the second layer? Tunica media. And then finally, what do you have? The Tunica adventitia, outermost. Second layer would be what? Media. And then finally, in the wall of the lumen, you have what? Tunica intima, right? Where do you find the endothelium? So if this were the artery like this, like this, right? The innermost layer where you find the lumen would contain the tunica intima, which contains the endothelium. The second layer would be the tunica what? Media. What does the media contain? Muscles. Smooth muscles. And what, a, what does the adventitia contain? Connective. Elastic connective tissue fibers, right? Mm -hmm. Elastic connective tissue what? Fibers. fibers. So that is what you find in the wall of both arteries and veins. What's right? Tunica adventitia is made up of elastic connective tissue fibers. Tunica media is made up of smooth muscles while your tunica intima contains the endothelium. So whether it's an artery versus vein, both of them contain the same layers. Except that the wall in the artery is much what? Thicker. And the muscle layer is also much thicker. The, vein, the veins, the walls are thinner. Right? The veins are much thinner. And in fact, both of them have the same layers. So what is the significance of these? Smooth muscles, what can they do? Contract or what? Relax. So when the smooth muscles here contract, you have vaso what? Vasoconstriction. And when you have vasoconstriction, what happens to the blood flow? Constrict, what happens to the blood flow? Slower, decrease. decrease blood flow or increase blood flow? Increase. Decrease blood flow, right? Pressure increases. Okay, but the blood pressure will be what? Increase. It goes up. Like example, when you go to the garden, the water pressure is low, what do you do at the tip of the garden hose? You put your finger so that the pressure will be what? Psh. Instead of the water pressure low, we put your finger so that it will like psh. When the muscles relax here, what happens? They so what? Dilate. Dilate. And what happens to the blood flow? Increase. It's quite obvious. When the vaso dilate, the lumen becomes bigger, there will be more blood flowing. Does that make sense? Yes. But what will happen to the blood pressure? Well, it drops. The vaso dilate. So you might be wondering, what the hell is this for me, Dr. Gamma? What do I need this for? In the chapter on blood flow, there were certain formulas that you need to know, right? Can anybody tell me what is the name of this formula? Q is equal to what? P over what? What's the name of this law or formula? Ohms. Where Q represents what? Blood flow, while P represents what? Pressure. Pressure what? Pressure what? Pressure what? What? Gradient. You know what the word gradient means? Huh? Difference, basically. Difference. Difference or gradient. It means one side has to be higher pressure, 
and lower pressure. Where do you think the blood flow will flow? From high pressure to low pressure or low pressure to high pressure? High pressure. From high pressure to low pressure. I'll give you an example. In the case of the heart, Okay, the heart is here. This is the left ventricle. So we see me? Yes. Can you see this? Is? This is the aorta here. Of all the chambers of the heart, which one contains the highest pressure? The left ventricle, right? Because it's the main pump. In fact, the walls here are much thicker compared to the other chambers of the heart. During systole, which means muscle contraction of the myocardium there. High pressure to what? To low. High pressure to low. High pressure to low. High pressure to low. Does that make sense? That's the reason why the blood will flow. There's a pressure gradient. High pressure, low pressure. High, low. That's why it goes this way. And eventually to the respective organ. It pierces the diaphragm. What is the name of the artery to the kidney? Renal. renal artery. Where did it come from? From the aorta. Which aorta? Abdominal aorta. What is the name of the artery to the spleen? Don't you have a, don't you have an abdomen? <laughs> what does renal mean? What does splenic mean? Spleen. So what is the name of the artery to the spleen? Spleen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't you love anatomy? <laughs> what about the artery to the liver? Hepatic. What? Hepatic. hepatic artery. Because what does hepatic mean? Liver. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what about the stomach? Gastric. gastric. Left gastric, right gastric, short <clears throat> gastric, gastroepiploic. Does that make sense to you guys? Right? So the blood comes from the heart. It carries oxygenated blood. It goes to the respective organs from high pressure to low pressure. It's called pressure gradient. Delta P. Delta P means what? Pressure gradient. The blood will always flow from high pressure to low, which makes sense. Now, what about the R there? Very good. Resistance. Can anybody tell me what is the definition of the word resistance? Anyone, you have studied this for one week already? You watch the Kultura videos, you watch my... <laughs> what did you say? The opposing force. Of course. <laughs> so I need only two words. Opposing force. Did, did the rest of you get that? Were you able to read that in your notes and your books? Okay, explain what is opposing force, my dear. Can you cite an example? Resistance. When you say resistance, you said opposing force. Oppose. Oppose. Okay, look for example, the flow of the blood is this way, right? Way. What do you think can flow, oppose the flow of blood this way? The hmm? opposite force. Can you give me an example? Opposite I'll give you an example. Would you like me to give the example? Let's say you have fat deposits here. Right? The fat deposit there, will, will that oppose the force yes. of direction like the flow of blood this way? Yes. It does, right? It opposes the flow of blood because there's a fat deposit there. Now look at me. I used to have a six pack of muscle, it's now just one pack of fat. It's true. It's true. Now this pack of fat, where do you think the excess fat will go? Here, here. I'm going to die. Wait, did you say um, resistance means going? Opposing the force. So if the blood goes this way, yeah. anything that will oppose it, prevents it from flowing this way. Can the presence so of a fat deposit, the flow. it blocks the flow. That's why it can, it's opposing it, right? Wait, wait, relax, chill, chill. Let's, 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 one at a time, you know? <laughs> chill, okay, chill. Fat. It opposes the force, right? Okay. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Now, it's called atherosclerosis. You've read about that, right? Okay. So this is blood flow, which is Q, is equal to pressure gradient of resistance. What is the relationship between pressure gradient and flow? Directly proportional or inverse? 
And you know, I hope you have taken mass. What is directly proportional? You increase the pressure gradient, what happens to the blood flow? It goes up. In other words, the more you pump blood and the pressure difference between this and this is higher, the more the blood will what? Flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. On the other hand, what about resistance and blood flow? Directly proportional or inverse? In other words, by increasing the resistance, what happens to the blood flow? It goes down. Inverse relationship. Where did you learn that? Basic math. It's the opposite. In other words, in inverse, this is the numerator, this is the denominator. Increase resistance, blood flow will go down. What happens if you decrease resistance? The blood flow will increase. In other words, if I remove the plug there, what happens to the resistance? It goes down. What happens to the blood flow? It goes up. Do you understand? Do you understand? The presence of the plug increases resistance, opposing the forces that force the blood this way. Therefore, what happens to the blood flow? It goes down. Now, let's pretend this is the aorta. What is the blood supply to the myocardium? What is it called? Coronary. Coronary what? Arteries. Arteries. What kind of blood? Oxygenated blood. In patients with atherosclerotic heart disease, what is atherosclerosis again? The deposition of fat where? in the wall of the tunica intima of the coronary arteries and sclerosis means hardening because there's fat deposits there. So when you have fat deposits there, will that increase the resistance of flow? The blood was supposed to flow this way, right? To the myocardium. But because there is the presence of plaque, increased resistance, what happens to the blood flow? It decreases. It decreases. So that is what we mean by the word myocardial one, ischemia. What is ischemia again? Decreased blood flow. What caused the blood flow to decrease? The presence of plaque, which caused increased resistance. Blood flow will decrease. In this term, we call it myocardial ischemia. Will that lead to chest pain? Is that what we call angina? Pectoris. Why is it called angina pectoris? Pectoral muscle, muscles, chest wall. Angina is going to manifest in these patients suffering from what we call ischemic heart disease or atherosclerotic heart disease or otherwise known as coronary artery disease. What is the pathology here? Deposition of fat in the wall of the coronary artery. Are we able to use this formula? Simple. Now, are you familiar with the drug called nitroglycerin? Yes. Nitroglycerin. <coughs> what is this drug going to do? Nitroglycerin under the tongue, sublingual. Sub means below, lingual means tongue, or it's form of a medication skin patch. It goes into the blood vessels, it goes to the blood vessels, travels all the way to the blood vessels, ending up where? Here. And what does this drug do to the arteries here? What? Vasodilate. So what is this drug going to do? It is a what? Vaso what? Dilator. And when you vasodilate, what happens to? Resistance goes down, what happens to the blood flow? Yes? So this will increase blood flow. Will that leave, relieve the chest pain? Yes. yes, it will. Do you understand why we give this to our patients? When the nurse is told by Dr. Gamo, give the patient nitroglycerin under the tongue, sublingual, that's the reason why. We want to vasodilate, 
when you vasodilate, you decrease resistance, you increase blood flow, and therefore. So without the presence of plaque, it's still going to increase resistance. Why? Because the lumen is smaller. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, are you following me? But you, you give nitroglycerin to a patient, the blood flow will increase, but what happens to the blood pressure? Drops. Because remember, this drug will not only affect the coronary arteries, but can it affect the arteries of the limbs and the upper limbs and the lower limbs? And what is the term used to describe when the blood pressure drops? Hypotension. So let's say the blood pressure baseline was 120 over 80. It went down to 90 over 60. Is that a significant drop from 120 to 90 systolic? Yes. So you call Dr. Gamo. Dr. Gamo, I give five milligrams of nitroglycerin under the tongue. After 15 minutes, the blood pressure dropped from 120 to 90 systolic. What do you think will Dr. Gamo do? Will I stop the drug or lower the dose? We lower the dose first. From 5 milligrams, maybe 2.5 milligrams. And then this time, the blood pressure did not drop. Let's maintain that dose. When I say PRN, you know what that PRN stands for? That's per orem. P-O, per orem. What about PRN? As needed. P-R-N. N-R-N. N as in no. <laughs> P, Papa, R, Red, N. P-R-N. You understand? Okay, now. The question now is this. How different is this? But we're going to be talking about this when we talk about the heart. Right? Now, what is the other formula I want you to know? What is R? Can you still see me? Just want to be sure. R is equal to A and L over pi R to the fourth. What is the name of this formula? Is it in the book? What page in the new edition of the book? There. Poissel's law. How do you spell Poissel? P O I S. What? P O I S. Okay. What page is this in the book? 318. 318. What about this one? QXOP over R. What page is this? 319. 319. Om. 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 You do meditation. Mantra. Poisons, Lord, Prishroom. This is a French guy. What is R? Resistance. What is N? Viscosity of the blood. What is L? Length. Length of the blood vessel. And what is R? Radius. Radius of the blood vessel. What is radius? Half of the diameter, right? This is diameter from one end to the other end. What is radius? From the center to the side. Radius. You're familiar with math, with geometry, right? And there's, again, from here to here, diameter. From the middle to here, radius. Half of the diameter. Now what is the relationship between resistance and radius? Inverse or inverse? Inverse. inverse. And what does inverse mean? Just like here, see? If you increase the radius, oh my god, my voice is saying <laughs> What happens with the resistance? Decreases. Because it's inverse. And when you decrease the resistance, what happens to the blood flow? Of course. So let's remove this. In other words, when you increase the ranges, inverse, the decrease, there's a decrease in the resistance. Inverse. Opposite. And what would be the effect? If you decrease the resistance, 
What happens to the blood flow? Of course, increase what? Blood flow. So when I vasodilate with the use of a drug, vasodilate, what happens to the ranges? Increase. What happens to the resistance? Decrease. What happens to the blood flow? Will that nitroglycerin drug therefore increase blood flow? Yes. And what do you think it will do to the muscles? Relax or relax? Yes. And which muscles are we referring to? The smooth muscles where? Chunica media of what? The wall of the artery. To become a smart student, you have to answer the question why, how, where? Are you expected to memorize these two formulas? Yes. And be able to apply them in your nursing careers? Now, what is the relationship between viscosity, length of the vessel, and resistance? Directly proportional or directly? Pro directly. <laughs> relationship is direct proportional. In other words, if you increase the length of the blood vessel, more resistance because it will be longer. If you increase viscosity of the blood, what happens to the resistance? More resistance. Now, for those of you who participated in the virtual classroom last Friday morning, there only by before, my Thursday class, there were eight of them. There were more. It's okay. Can anybody tell me what's a good example for viscosity? Increase in protein. Hmm? Increase in protein. Increase in protein, yes, but what is most common? Increase on your red blood cell count. Polycythemia. Polycythemia or cythemia? Polycythemia. P O L Y C Y T H E M I A. I'll only say it once. <laughs> I'm trying to confirm my ATP. I'm just kidding. Polycythemia is spelled P O L Y. Poly. C Y. Cy. Themia, T H E M I A. If you have read the book, you should know how to spell it, right? And what exactly is polycythemia, my friend? Uh, high count of red blood cells. Precisely. So if you have a lot of red blood cells here in the blood, will that increase the viscosity? Yes. My candy, the chocolate candy. Yes? It's obvious there will be a lot of solute versus solvent, right? A lot of red blood cells will that increase viscosity. And if you have polycythemia with increased viscosity, will that also increase resistance? And when you have increased resistance, what would be the effect? Increased resistance, what happens to the blood flow? What am I trying to say here? There is nothing that you cannot answer in nursing and medicine if you know this formula. Viscosity and length directly proportional. Increase length, increase viscosity, increase resistance, increase resistance, decrease blood flow. On the other hand, rages. Of all the parameters involved, which one is the most important factor that you can alter? Rages or rages? I just told you, I vasodilated the blood vessel with this drug. See? Increase. Blood flow, why? Because you decrease resistance, your blood flow will go up. Based on this formula. When I gave the drug nitroglycerin, it causes vasodilation. What happened to the rages? It went up. What happened to the resistance? It went down. And then when resistance goes down, blood flow goes up. Because it's inverse. Do you understand? People on the left side and people on the right side. Can you see this? I don't think you can. Because you can see there's this. You can always transfer to this side. I hope, if you don't mind. Do you understand? Is that clear? Do you understand when I'm trying to drive it here? Okay? Is that important? Now remember, when you have ischemia here, will that result in hydropic swelling? Now some of your discussion board, I don't understand. 
Some answer is that hypertrophy. Is that a form of cell injury or cellular adaptation? Adaptation. What's an example of cellular injury? There were two types, reversible and irreversible. Reversible was what? Hydropic swelling and intracellular accumulation. When there is not enough decreased blood flow here because of the fat deposit, will there be enough ATP? And when there is not enough ATP here, will there be enough energy for the sodium potassium pump? And will it be able to pump sodium out? Sodium remains in the cell. Wherever water is, or wherever sodium is, water will go inside. So it's hydropic swelling. Do you understand? But is it reversible? Yes, because if I give a vasodilator, you improve the blood flow back. You give a drug to lower the cholesterol levels like Lipitor, bang, reversible. Now what is irreversible? As time goes by, like me, I'm the prime example. I don't get rid of this fat, I don't exercise, I have a sedentary lifestyle, I do not exercise. The fat gets bigger, bigger. What happens to the blood flow? The blood flow becomes less and less and slower. And when the blood flow is slower, with the blood clot. And when the blood clot in the middle, the presence of the blood clot and the fat deposit will completely block the flow of blood. When there is zero flow, what will be the effect? MI. And what is myocardial infarct? Is that a form of coagulative necrosis? Because what is coagulate? To clot. Is that reversible or irreversible? Irreversible, because can you restore a dead cell? It's dead, it will be dead forever. Do you understand the difference, right? Okay, now, in this chapter, it dealt with a lot of conditions which I have in your study guide, right? The study guide is for the quiz. If you know this study guide, I'm sure you'll probably get 90 plus percent. If you study this well, I guarantee you. <laughs> Thrombophlebitis, what does that mean? Yes, my dear. Thrombophlebitis. Okay. Thrombo means what? What kind of clot? Stationary or traveling clot? Stationary. And wherefore, where is it attached to? What part of the blood vessel wall? Tunica intima or tunica intima? <laughs> In other words, if you have a leg vein, this is the leg vein, there is a clot on the wall. It's the reason why it's stationary because it's attached to the wall. How did it form there because of lack of exercise, a sedentary lifestyle? How do you prevent thrombophlebitis by exercising the leg? That is how you prevent it, by letting the patient walk, active walking exercise, right? Range of motion exercises. But some of these patients are lazy, they're not cooperative. So in spite of the fact that you tell them to exercise, they don't, they lie down in bed for one day or day. And can they therefore form trouble plebitis? Remember the word signs and symptoms? What would be a symptom there? What would the patient tell you? Leg what? Yes, you? Remember the cardinal signs of inflammation. Dolor, pain, which is a symptom. What about calor? Sign or symptom? Sign, because you can use your hand to feel the warmth of that lesion in the leg. What about rubor? What is rubor? Redness. So you have dolor, calor, caliente, you know Spanish? And then what is rubor? R-U-B-O-R, redness. And what is tumor, tumor? Increase in size because of the swelling. So when you are a nurse, the patient comes to you and says, nurse, I have pain in my left leg. What are you going to do next? Hmm? Yes, anybody? What's the most common sense thing to do? Assess it. Huh? Look at it. Of course, assess the leg, no? <laughs> if that nurse is too, uh, if the nurse is incompetent, 
He will not do anything. He will call the doctor right away. So you assess the leg, look at the leg. You have to get rid of the... Da -ra -da -ra -ra. <laughs> so find out where is the redness is the back of the leg how big is the redness so a very competent nurse will even use a tape measure the diameter of the redness is five centimeter in the calf area on the left leg in the mid portion. On palpation, I noted the presence of warmth. On ocular inspection, red. Palpation, it's warm. Patient complains of pain. On palpation of the lesion, it's there's pain elicited, it's called tenderness. Okay, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So you have to assess. Now, what is phlebitis? Itis means inflamed. Phlebo vein. Yes. Remember the word phlebotomy? You get blood from the vein. You create a hole. Otomy means create a hole to get the blood to drink. Phlebotomy is phlebotomy. So thrombophlebitis means there is a clot in an inflamed leg vein. It's the most common sight. What are you going to do with that leg? Exercise the leg or do not exercise? Exercise. Huh? What did you say? Exercise. And that's the best way to kill the patient. Because <laughs> <laughs> the clot will move. The what? It'll move. The, the clot, clot will what? Move or travel? Travel. Also, it can be like compression devices. Okay, relax. Chill, chill, okay? <laughs> this, if this were a thread on Facebook, concentrate on what's being discussed. <laughs> so you have a clot. How did you know there's a clot? Because based on your assessment, it is fresh, it's warm, it's painful. And this patient has not been exercised, has been not be cooperative, he's 80 years old, he's in the nursing home or the hospital. Guess what are you gonna do? Do not exercise the leg. Because the moment you exercise the leg, is it possible for that clot to become detached yes. and be converted into an embolus? Then what exactly is an embolus? A traveling what? Blood clot. So from the leg, leg veins in the leg, covers to what? The vena cava. What is the name of the vena cava? <coughs> Inferior. And it enters the right what? Atrium. Right? Tricuspid valve, right ventricle. Does the clot stop in the vena cava? No, it's a big vein. Does the clot stop in the right atrium? No, it's a big chamber. Does the clot pass through the tricuspid valve? Yes, we'll stop there now. Will it stop in the right ventricle? No, because it's a big chamber. It, from there it goes where? Pulmonary what? Artery. Trunk and pulmonary artery goes to the lung. Will it stop in the lung? Yes. yes. Why? Why? Yes? Huh? Why will it stop in the lungs? Okay, I'll answer my own question because there is no more time. You have pulmonary capillaries in the lung. And what's the capillary in the lung? It's the smallest blood vessel. Only one red blood cell can go through. If this were a, a capillary, only one red blood cell can go through. So the clot will what? Big. Stops in the lung. It's called pulmonary embolism. And how do you know? Patients will complain of sudden onset of what? Chest pain associated with difficulty of? Difficulty of? It's called SOB. What does SOB mean? Son of a uh, shortness of? Red. Red. It's a joke only. Son of a. Okay. Shortness of breath. Or this man. Difficulty of breathing. Is that life threatening? Yes. yes. So, what happens if you're the nurse and you begin to access the leg with thrombophlebitis? The clot will travel, becomes an embolus to the vena cava, the right side of the heart, stops in the lung, pulmonary embolism, the patient will. Die. Patient will. Rest in, six feet under the ground. Permanent resident <laughs> forest, lawn, cemetery. And you will lose your, and you will not be able to pay your 150,000 student. 
Because you were income. <laughs> You're laughing about this, but remember what I just told you. Never <coughs> exercised a leg with what? Combo <coughs> phlebitis. Do you understand why? Okay. Now, what's the difference between thrombophlebitis and deep vein thrombosis? Which one affects the deep vein? Deep vein thrombosis or thrombophlebitis? DVT. That's why it's called DVT, no? Right? You have superficial veins and deep veins. Deep vein thrombosis is common, like me. I, I, I come, I'm the Philippines. I, I, I went home last August. How long will I stay on the Pacific Ocean air field? 14 hours. 14 to 15 hours. What happens if I sit in that chair of the plane for 15 hours straight without moving around? Can I form a blood clot in my leg veins, in the deep vein? Yes, I can. That's the reason why they recommend that you walk around the plane. That's what I do. I go around and meet women. And hi. <laughs> Especially when my wife is not around. <laughs> Best time. No, I'm just, not just women, but men. Of course, but mostly women. I don't like men. Hi, my name is Dr. Gamo. I teach at West Coast. Would you like to take up nursing? It's under 50,000. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. No? You walk around, right? You exercise. I remember when we went to Barcelona, Spain last uh, October with my wife. So I would always go like this, and like a stupid guy walking in the, 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 the plane, the and from the front to the back, and then, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> for my leg, I go like this. So I apply what I teach here, right? So what happens if you don't exercise? And you sit there because you want to talk to this young woman, you know? For 15 hours, you go down, you get the bag in the carousel, and you again have what? Pulmonary embolism. Is that going to be life-threatening? Definitely. Okay? Is that clear? Now, have you heard of Berger's disease? What is exactly is Berger's disease? It's a type of illness that is associated with young men who smoke. How many of you smoke here? Young men? Young men keep on smoking so that you will lose your leg and amputate it. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. One less hand in the world. Amputation of the hand, amputation of the foot. The reaction to my joke is... <laughs> Have you seen the picture there on the picture on the book? Burger's disease? It's not uh, in and out burger. <laughs> B-U-E-R-G-E-R, -E right? So apparently it's called thromboangitis obliterans. It's associated with young men who smoke. That's why I will not recommend to smoke. To smoke right? I don't smoke. I don't drink alcohol. I'm faithful to my wife, so I'm a guy, nice guy. I'm an ideal husband, right? When my wife is around, I'm always faithful. <laughs> What's wrong being faithful? Is that wrong? <laughs> Joke only, okay? So apparently these people who smoke and have this disease, are we going to amputate their leg or foot? No. If we have no choice, yes, because if they develop gangrene, that can be a source of what? Infection. If you have no choice, but the Dory, I will provide you with a prosthetic device or artificial foot. Yes, ma'am. What was another word for disease? Thromboangitis obliterans. Thromboangitis. It's actually in the book. I, I believe. Three thirty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three thirty. There you go. Okay. What is atherosclerosis? I already explained this to you, right? It's called plaque formation on the wall of the arteries. A lot of these people complain of claudication, painful when they walk around. And this also means the reason why you develop hypertension. Why? But the moment your fat deposits here, what happens to the resistance? Increase. Will that increase your blood pressure? Definitely. The elasticity becomes affected, right? So we talked about resistance, blood flow in that study guide. Blood pressure, resistance, blood flow, QPR. Resistance is again what? Opposition forces. And then of course, your coagulation factors or clotting, where, where are these clotting factors produced actually? In the liver. Remember? Prothrombin, fibrinogen, right? The liver is here, it produces clotting factor. These are made of protein, plasma proteins. So what therefore happens when you have liver disease? Will you be able to produce your clotting factors? No. You end up bleeding. bleeding. So a lot of these patients who drink a lot, how many of you drink alcohol? 
Go ahead, continue. <laughs> Too much drinking of alcohol will lead to liver cirrhosis, scar formation, which becomes irreversible, and you become jaundice, yellowing of the skin will occur, and end up with what? You will not be able to produce the clotting factors because you have completely destroyed what? The liver cells or hepatocytes. And if you do not produce the clotting factors, your blood will not clot, you will bleed to death. But before you die, you have skin lesions consistent with bleeding. Don't worry, I will tell you exactly what will happen to you. <laughs> Free consultation, I don't charge. I don't practice medicine anyway. I used to practice, but not anymore. What's the proximity of a platelet? Does anybody know? Now, because I have no more time, I will answer my own question. Yes? It's also important for blood clotting with a different mechanism. A platelet will actually what? Aggregate. Aggregate means they come together. So the platelet is a fragment of a cell, the megacardiocyte. The platelets will come together before what? A plug. You know what's a plug? When you have a wound, gunshot wound, stop wound, there is what? A hole, and so the blood will come out, right? It's bleeding. What will the platelet do? They aggregate together, they form what? A plug to stop the bleeding and form, it clots the blood too. Does it make sense? In order for the blood to clot, you need two things. One, platelet produced by the red bone marrow, and two, you need what? The clotting factors produced by the liver. Does it make sense, right? Okay. Now, anemia. There are many forms of anemia. In the case of anemia, which one among these would be the most common type of anemia? What is it? Very good. Why is there anemia? What is the definition of anemia class? Low red, low red blood cell count. Remember, in that chapter, it talks about what? This is chapter, I believe, uh, was it chapter 13? Oxygen function. Chapter 13 deals with oxygen function. The red blood cell is important for the transport of both CO2 and O2. When there is a decrease in the red blood cell count, it's called anemia. The most common is called what? Iron deficiency. Why? Your red blood cell contains hemoglobin. How many? Two alpha and two beta chains. Each of these beta chains and alpha chains have what? The heme group, which is the porphyrin ring. The heme. Okay? The globin part is the protein component. Globin. Uh, two alpha and two beta chains of globin, protein. The heme is part made up of the porphyrin ring, which contains iron. So if you have two alpha and two beta, how many molecules of oxygen can you therefore transport? Four. Four. Two alpha and two beta. And where is the iron found in the porphyrin ring? In other words, in order to produce red blood cell, do you need iron? Yes. In other words, how many of you have been pregnant? Me, never. Okay. <laughs> can these women suffer from iron deficiency anemia? Because they're going to be competing with the baby there. The baby will steal your iron? I'm just joking. So do we give iron supplements to these mothers? In the form of ferrous sulfate? Yes, we do. But we tell the patient, watch out because the poo, poo will turn black. What is the normal color of your stool? Golden, yellow, brown. The last time I checked. What about you? <laughs> Golden, yellow, greenish brown? Ew. Ew. Does it smell? Of course. Now, if you give ferrosulfate or iron tablet supplements to these women who are pregnant, if they complain of black stool, that's acceptable. But if there is gastric bleeding, a stomach ulcer, can the stool also become black due to a bleeding stomach ulcer? If you're, you're not pregnant and you have black tools, that means you probably have a stomach also that's bleeding. You understand what I mean? But that, that's a side effect of the drug, okay? Now, what is uh, renal failure? What is the relationship between renal failure and anemia? Can anybody tell me? Yeah. Very good. And what, what organ produces the erythropoietin, my friend? Yes. Give him a chance. By the way, congratulate him, he had a baby girl. Yes. I'm so happy for him. Last night? 
That's right. What's the name of your baby girl? Angelica. Joella? Angelica. My name is Joel. Angelica Joella. An angel, very good. So, last night, what time? Uh, she was born at like 9.30 p.m. Wow. So I think. We're all invited to his house tonight. <laughs> Okay, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. No pressure. Okay, if you have renal failure, will you be able to produce erythropoietin? Will you be able to stimulate the red bone marrow to produce red blood cells? Because that is a function of erythropoietin. Where did we learn that? Anatomy and physiology. If, therefore, if you know your anatomy, there is no reason you're going to answer all the questions here. The kidney produces erythropoietin, which stimulates the red bone marrow to produce what? Red blood cells. If the kidney is failing, will you be able to produce erythropoietin? No. Will you be able to stimulate the red bone marrow to produce red blood cells? No. Is that what we call anemia due to chronic kidney disease? Yes. So what do you think we give these patients with this kind of Ill illness? What do you think we give them? Yes? Huh? Blood transfusion. What? Blood transfusion. Okay. Chill. Chill. Relax. <laughs> I already spoke around one minute ago, I said, in kidney failure patients, they do not produce erythropoietin because the kidney is failing. And if they do not have erythropoietin, you cannot stimulate the red bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So what do you think I will give them? Yes. Of course, erythropoietin! What kind? Man-made or man-made? Man. Synthetic or man-made? <laughs> Both. It's the same thing. Does anybody know the name of this drug we call? Huh? Are you an LVN? No wonder. You'll pass the RN exam for that question only. Tell them what is it. Shout it to them. Procrit. Procrit. <laughs> Louder, please. Procrit. What is? Procrit. Okay. Is that P R O C R I T? Okay, I know how to spell. I went to grade school, I went to grade school in an American missionary school. Procrit. Is that synthetic? Yeah. Don't you have anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology? <laughs> Patient has renal failure, they start producing erythropoietin. What does man do? Give erythropoietin. <laughs> synthetic. Isn't that amazing? If your platelet count is low, what do you give the patient? Platelet concentrate. I, I love anatomy and physiology. <laughs> <laughs> and find out what's wrong with the what? The bone marrow. How come the platelet count is low, right? We do a bone marrow, what? Aspirate, BMA. Is that going to be painful? Very painful. Now, what is the relationship B12 intrinsic factor? Where do you produce the intrinsic factor? Stomach. Huh? Stomach. Stomach. Which cell? Parietal cell or parietal right. cell? Right. Exactly. I have no more time, right? Parietal cell produce two things. Hydrochloric acid and then what? Intrinsic factor. What does intrinsic factor do? Anybody? A of B, vitamin B12, or what we call cobalamin, where cobalamin. in the small intestine. And why is B12 important? Is that important for red blood cell production? Yes. yes, it is. Vitamin B12 is important. In other words, if your parietal cells of the wall of the stomach does not produce enough intrinsic factor, you cannot absorb vitamin B12. If you cannot absorb B12, what kind of anemia will you develop? Huh? What kind of anemia? Yes? You're the man. Pernicious? P-E-R-N-I-C-I-O-U-S? P-E-R-N-I-C-I-O-U-S? P-E-R-N-I-C-O... You understand? Now, what exactly is hemolytic disease of the newborn? Simple? It has to do with the what we call RH or D antigen. This is the red blood cell. It is a type of antigen on the surface of the red blood cell. It's not going to be a letter R and H, but it has to be an antigen there, right? Or D. Okay, from the word rhesus monkey. <clears throat> like me, I'm blood type B plus. What does B mean? That's my blood type B. What does plus mean? RH positive. So where is the problem here? Very important. Mother is RH negative. What does that mean? RH negative, she does, not, she does not have the antigen, which means she also does not have the antibodies. Negative for antigen, negative for antibodies. 
Father, that's me. <laughs> because I am what? No, I'm just kidding. If I have sex with my wife, now my wife actually is, is positive. So let's say I have uh, sex with another woman who is not my wife, okay? <laughs> it is only an assumption, okay? My partner in sex, I'm crying, not crying. <laughs> negative, I am positive, she gets pregnant. First pregnancy, the son or the boy or the girl becomes RH1. Because he inherited that from me. I have, I don't know, maybe stronger XY. Okay. Is there a problem here? There is. Why? Mother is negative, baby is positive. Mother does not have the antigen, does not have the antibodies, baby has the antigen. What happens during the last month of pregnancy, in the eighth or ninth month of pregnancy, during placental separation? But the vagina is here, the legs are there. What do you do with the baby? Push, oxytocin, right? Push, 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 push. Go ahead. Thank God, I'm the first baby. That's what the baby will say. Why is the first baby safe? Because during placental separation, the baby will come out first, followed by the placental separation. There will be a lengthening of the umbilical cord with a sudden gush of warm blood that will come out in the nursing board exam. When the placenta separates from the endometrial wall, the placenta will separate, there will be bleeding, warm blood, and lengthening of the umbilical cord because it's now going to come out. Is there the possibility of mixing blood from mother and baby? Yes. So during placental separation, mix blood, what will the mother do? Mother develops what? <coughs> Antibodies against what? RH antigen of the first baby. But the first baby is safe because he's already out. But the mother developed antibodies, bad or bad? Very bad. Mama and Papa have sex, second pregnancy. Again, the baby is RH positive. It's father's fault. Or nobody's fault. Guess what? What will the antibodies do? Attack the second baby during the eighth or ninth of pregnancy. It's called what? Hemolytic what? Disease of the newborn, newborn or erythroblastosis. Erythro <coughs> fetalis. Bad or good? The fetus will die because the antibodies will cause the red blood cells to what? Rupture and burst. That's why it's called hemolytic disease, hemolysis. The antibodies will cause the red blood cells of the second baby to rupture and the baby will die. But there is hope. What do we do, the mother? We give Rogan. What does Roga mean? RH, Ga means what? Gamo. <laughs> it's so funny with Gamo. My last name? No, I'm just joking. It's Gamma globulin. What is Gamma globulin? A synthetic form of antibodies. You remember the word? What's another name for antibodies? Immunoglobulin. We inject the mother with Roga, which is a synthetic form of immunoglobulin, during the first trimester, uh, first pregnancy, seventh, eighth month of pregnancy, and during labor and delivery. We do the same thing for the second pregnancy. Why, why do we do that? By giving the what? The antibodies in the first pregnancy, you prevent the mother from what? You prevent the mother from developing the harmful antibodies. Does that make sense? You're trying to do what? Passive immunization. What is passive immunization? Giving what? The antibodies. Does that make sense? Are you going to give the second pregnancy? Yes. It's called Rogan. So in this situation, the problem arises when the mother is, R is negative, she does not have antibodies in the beginning, and the baby is what? RH positive. That is a problem. So what is the moral lesson from this story? So let's say you, you and your, your partner, you want to have sex in a hotel. You're about to remove your underwear. And the guy says, oh shit. Honey, what's your blood type? <laughs> Are you RH negative or positive? The wife would say, or the partner would say, I do not know. Okay, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> yes. 
I just remember what Dr. Gamma told me in class. <laughs> tomorrow morning, have yourself tested, and you can have sex tomorrow the whole day. <laughs> it's your ovulation tomorrow, isn't it? Ovulation, 14 days after the first day of menstrual bleeding, the right time to have sex. And you get if pregnant. If you want to get pregnant. Of course! I want her to get pregnant. And I'm telling my wife, see? No, I'm just joking. Now, how many of you here do know that your RH is negative or positive? Women. Okay, you don't have to raise your hand, okay? If you want, it's okay. How many of you are definitely sure that your RH is negative? You don't have to raise your hand. I'm not kidding. You better make sure you know what is your RH. And some of you, I presume, don't even know your blood type. That's even worse. How the hell can you be a nurse and you don't even know your blood type? How many of your blood type be here? Okay, you better give me your phone numbers, okay? Because I'm B. If tonight I go home and have meet an accident, I'm bleeding in the freeway, I will call you. I'm bleeding. Miss Golken, and what's your name? Beverly. Beverly Hills, okay. <laughs> I need your blood type B. You understand what I'm saying? Are you, is this clear, okay? I was not joking about the better. I'm pretty sure some of you don't even your, your R is negative or positive. Believe me, if you don't know it, better have it done. The soonest possible time. Okay, now what else? Okay, amyloidic disease, I already talked about RBG factor. What is multiple myeloma? It's a form of cancer involving what? Mm -hmm. The bones. And apparently, when you do the um, x-rays of these, there are part out lesions, right? And there's a lot of bone pain here. Okay, multiple myeloma, is that going to be very painful? It is, right? Now. In the chapter 10 on leukemias, okay class, which among this leukemia is seen in, with the Philadelphia chromosome? CML. CML, what is CML? Chronic myeloid leukemia, Philadelphia chromosome. What about the commonly seen in children? ALL. ALL, what is ALL? Acute. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Okay, the type of hypersensitivity pattern, right? You have four. One, two, three, and four. Where do you find allergy, allergic rhinitis, eczema? B sting, B sting. Type one. What about glomerulonephritis and SLE? Type three, immune complex disease. What about tubercle intestine, contact dermatitis? Type four. What about myasthenia gravis? Type 2. What about hemolytic disease of the born, newborn? Type 2. What about ABO incompatibilities? Like, if you're A and I'm B, are we compat inc compatible or incompatible? B, B, compatible. A, B, not compatible. Why? I am B. What do I have? If this is my red blood cell. I have B antigen. What is in my plasma? Anti-A. I hate the A's. What is your blood type? A. How oh, does even also worse, right? <laughs> as long as you have A, I hate you. If you are A and AB, I hate you both. Why? Because my blood will what? The recipient will attack what? My antibodies will attack the A of AB and the A of A. And who will suffer? Me, the recipient. Why? It's called blood transfusion reaction because you gave me the wrong blood type. Is that happening in the hospital? Yes. Are there stupid people in the hospital? Yes. Doctors and nurses? Yes. Yes? yes. So be careful. That's why whenever we do blood transfusion, do we do what we call proper cross-matching? Even though the blood, if we go to the blood bank, there's a blood bag. Even though the bag says blood type B, are you going to do, determine if it's really true or not? What happens if the technician in the blood bag made a mistake labeled B with A? Oh my God, really? <laughs> or you put B and after this A, I will die. Because why? I'm not compatible with A. Yeah. Why? Because my red blood cell is B. What do I have in my plasma? Anti-A. Now can I be given O? Yes. It's a universal donor. The red blood cell of an O does not have any antigen. Who is O here? That's why there's, there's so many of you. But if you are bleeding, who can give you only an O? It's, it's not fair, right? You're so generous, you're the universal donor. But when it's your turn to be bleeding, you can only get from another O. But the good news is there's so many of you. 
But for me, B, only two. How many? What else is B here? <coughs> only two? <laughs> How the heck? But I got, I got you. I got you. I got you. So we're going to give you your blood? But okay. You'll get an A in this class in heaven. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, do you understand? Two. What about if it's blood transfusion reaction? What kind of blood type her two. hypersensitivity is at? Two. So just like hemolytic disease, blood transfusion reaction. What about hyperacute calf rejection? What about uh, myasthenia grievous? Okay, very good. Thyroiditis? Two. Okay, you understand, class? The switching reaction, the type two, it's, ah, it's all actually here, my goodness. <laughs> type one, type two, OMG, okay? Now, what is life threatening about an allergic reaction? Is it the anaphylactic shock or is it the bronchospasm? You have, how many of you are asthmatic here? Anybody who's asthmatic here? Okay, so when you have an asthmatic attack, you're exposed to the allergen. What happens? You're what? Your IgE, massas releases histamine. Are we going to give you antihistaminic? Yes. Are we going to give you a bronchodilator like epinephrine intramuscularly? Yes. Are we going to give you an inhaler with albuterol, which is a bronchodilator, yes. which will make the smooth muscles relax in the bronchioles? Yes? yes. When was the last time you have an asthmatic attack, my dear? <coughs> Eight months. Okay. My first question to you is this. Do you have an inhaler with you? Yeah. Can you show it to us? I should have it. I hope I have it. <laughs> well, she's good if she has it. In the past, every term I ask the students, they say it's in the car. Who will use it? <laughs> <laughs> what is worth is in the house. Who will use it? Very good. Show it to them. Go ahead. There you go. Is that, what is that? Albuterol, Ventolin? Albuterol. Okay. Albuterol, proven. Albuterol, okay, very good. It's a broken dilator. So should she carry it with all her all the time? Because if you have an asthmatic attack and your dad is in your car, how long will it take you to go to your car if you're in the second floor? You'll be dead. You'll be dead by then. How do you know? Okay, do this to your mouth. mouth. How long can you last? Three, four, four minutes. You could be great brain dead probably in five to six minutes, right? Uh, do you know how to use the EpiPen? Epinephrine? I'm also anaphylactic. Yeah, so if she were my daughter, I will make sure our house is in front of the emergency room. So I'm, all I need to do is push her. <laughs> and if I'm going to be a super millionaire, I'd buy the hospital. And her room will be right beside the ER, not even, she will be the ER. <laughs> So I love my kids, if they have asthmatic attacks. Will I allow her to go to Vegas by herself and drive the car? That's the most stupid thing to do. Is there any hospital between Vegas and, what's the last city there before Vegas? Barstow. Oh, she always goes to <laughs> the Barstow, the, uh, what do you call the store there, outlet store? From Barstow to Vegas, is there any hospital? There's not, so my baby or daughter or son will die. By the time you call 911, how long will the helicopter get to you? <laughs> 15 minutes? How long can you become brain dead? Five minutes. That's how stupid, see? What is the best thing you can do? Get your own plane with a hospital in the plane, you know? <laughs> That's my, how much I love my kids. I have to be rich first. I have to win the lottery first. <laughs> or the better thing to do is put up a hospital between Vegas and Barstow. Who wants to be my investors? <laughs> Okay, let's have a five minute break, come back, and we'll have the quiz. Oh, you know what tuberculin, right? Type four, right? When you inject that, it will be what? Indurated, elevated, 10 millimeters or more. It means you have been exposed to what? Tuberculous bacteria, but you, do not, you are not sick. How do you confirm? Chest x-ray. Or the best yet, sputum culture will be the best. Sputum culture. How long will you take them to come back? How many hours? 48 hours, the latest. 48 hours. Not earlier than that, 48 hours to check. 48 hours, okay? Okay, so break and then come back after five minutes.